Hi everyone, Creveen here from MTU's Blackrock Castle Observatory and in this week's video we are going to be doing something just a little different. Uh, we don't need to wait for the sun to set, but we will. Uh, the main focus of this video won't be the, the sky from here on Earth. It won't be our view of space, but a view of space that includes the Earth. So we are going to be looking down on the Earth from space. Now, if you've watched uh, if you've watched this YouTube channel for for a while over the past uh, year or so, uh, I may have shown a view of the Earth from another location, but I am going to use this to demonstrate uh, the number of areas you can get a view from using this software, Stellarium. So, firstly, the sun is setting here on the 4th. We're just almost at half 10. You can see Venus nice and bright there over the really almost the northwestern horizon at west-northwest. If we keep moving forward, you'll see Venus sets. We get Mars. Mercury, unfortunately, now out of view. Mars stays in the sky for, for a while, but it is hanging around for a shorter and shorter amount of time as we keep moving forward. Uh, still around a lot longer than Venus, still something you can comfortably take a look at. Oh, there are some of the uh, some of the meteor showers. None of those meteor showers are particularly impressive. They're not quite as big as the Perseids or the Leonids, but they contribute to the number of meteors that we see in the sky. And you generally see a background rate of around 10 or so meteors an hour. I'll get rid of our satellites there as well. Uh, so we can see Scorpius is coming up towards the south now, which means Sagittarius is pretty much over the horizon once we get into evening time and once the sun sets. The summer triangle is guaranteed to be up there in the east nice and high because we're certainly into summertime now. This is what we've got coming up in the evening sky and very quickly there's our Saturn and Jupiter in the morning sky. We can see them nice and clearly here three o'clock in the morning. Um, so pretty early if you're willing to get up that early but of course both of those planets are quite bright they're still here at half four Saturn will vanish but Jupiter will stick around until uh, almost five o'clock so that's what we've got to see in our sky from here on earth but we're not going to be looking at the sky from here on earth using the location window here in Stellarium. You can of course take a look at the sky from any location. Uh, so this is a great way to see the midnight sun. Uh, as you can see the sun during uh, the middle of the night if you're at the very bottom or very top of the planet during, uh, during the correct solstices. So uh, we're going to look at a completely different view altogether. So this list gives us an option of uh, various different objects in the solar system. For example, uh, this is what our view would look like from Ceres. So Ceres, of course, you know, it doesn't really have much in the way of atmosphere. So we're seeing all of this during the day. Earth, Mercury, Venus, they're nice and bright. Ceres is just out in the asteroid belt. So Jupiter looks amazing as well, as does Saturn. Ceres wouldn't have all of this grass, of course. Uh, if we bring back up our location window, here is our map of series and it's quite a quite a desolate looking surface it has a few of these white patches which uh, seem to contain water ice and other ices but otherwise it is a pretty desolate place out in the asteroid belt uh, some planets have a, a much prettier view from their surface or in the case of the gas giants their upper atmosphere that's how um, that's how Stellarium decides to show the gas giants and the view from the gas giants so for example if we go to Saturn you can see we're up in the atmosphere. Saturn, of course, does have an atmosphere, so we're getting this sort of blue sky effect. Wouldn't quite work like this on Saturn. Its atmosphere would be a very different composition to ours. But we can see the ring here from this location on Saturn. We can see the shadow of the planet crossing over the ring. We can see moons, and some moons go into and out of the shadow of Saturn. So it's a fantastic place to take a look at. But what I want to show you in this video truly is the solar system observer so this is sort of a, a hypothetical object in space it doesn't doesn't really exist oh i'm looking at the solar system observer here i believe no no i'm on it i'm just clicked onto a particular star uh, so this is a sort of a hypothetical position that allows you to see the solar system uh, from sort of from above. So most objects in our solar system lie along the plane of the ecliptic. So Jupiter, the Earth, Saturn, all of the asteroids in the asteroid belt, uh, most of the objects beyond that, even things like Pluto, uh, they're pretty much on a flat plane. So we're all in line pretty much with the sun's equator. This solar system observer is way, way above uh, sort of the north pole of the sun. So this allows us to look down on Earth, Jupiter, Saturn, and how they would move around the Sun. And that's what we're going to be taking a look at. So using our sky and viewing options, uh, we can show the orbits of these objects. So I'll leave them come on uh, 
in their entirety. Here we go. So here's all of the orbits. As you can see, some of them are quite large. Uh, this must be an object like Pluto, uh, very far out from the sun. Uh, we can see things like Uranus in there, quite distant from the sun. Mars a bit closer. Jupiter and Saturn are out there. We can also see these really, really long arcing orbits, uh, which would be the orbits of comets. And by looking around, you can see that they are uh, 3D. Some of them come up and away from the sun. We can see the orbit of moons around other objects as well, once we take a closer look. But if we zoom in here, uh, particularly, we'll start with Mercury. You very clearly see that this isn't a circle. And this is, in fact, uh, just showing that the orbits of the planets are elliptical. They're not crazy elliptical. Every ellipse has a measurement known as eccentricity. Uh, that one of the reasons I say crazy elliptical, because uh, if you're wealthy, you're not crazy or eccentric. Uh, so here we have the Sun, which would be one focus of the ellipse. Uh, that's what Mercury is really orbiting around. Over here somewhere, we'd have another focus of the ellipse. And this is what stretches the ellipse out from a circle. A circle, of course, only has one center, where an ellipse has two foci that it, or, that it goes around, or in this case, that the planet Mercury orbits around. It's really just orbiting around the mass of the Sun, but its orbit has this shape to it. And if we move through Mercury's year, you'll see that it goes, uh, see if I can show it correctly, it goes a little bit faster at some points and a little bit slower at other points. So uh, Kepler, Johannes Kepler discovered uh, some of the laws of the orbits of planets. And if you're going around an ellipse, you cover the same amount of space for every unit time. So when you're going across this wider arc of the ellipse, you're moving a little bit faster compared to when you're moving across this narrower little bit of the ellipse here. So that changes the speed of the planet as it moves around. It slows down and speeds up and slows down and speeds up as it goes to and from its closest point to the sun. Uh, so perihelion or aphelion or apophelion, as some people say. Um, I always say apophelion because it's helios uh, rather than philios. But of course, any way you want to pronounce it is fine. So we'll snap back to today. That's Mercury in its orbit. If we click on the Earth, that doesn't look too elliptical. Now it is, it is elliptical, but it is only slightly. So the orbits of the planets, they are elliptical, but very often when you see diagrams of these orbits, how elliptical they are gets exaggerated. Uh, just to make it a bit more obvious and really show that they're not a circle. And this isn't a circle. If you sit down and measure it, it's definitely not a circle, but it's pretty close. It's only a slightly eccentric ellipse. It's not a crazy ellipse. It's not very stretched out. Now, if we move out to the orbits of other planets, you'll see, you know, again, they're not perfectly circular. They are elliptical. But, you know, if we go to something like this, you can see that the orbits of these comets are incredibly elliptical. This is a really eccentric ellipse. Let's see, uh, I don't know if I can find the object that it's tracking. It doesn't seem to be coming up, but uh, some of these ellipses, uh, particularly when the object goes very close to and very far from the sun, they will be very eccentric. So they move much, much quicker when they're close to the sun. So we only see comets for that short amount of time. And then they move slower as they're out at the outside of the ellipse. And that's one of the reasons why comets have long periods. So this means there's a very long gap of time between uh, each time they visit us. So for example, Halley's Comet's about 75 years. It passes by the sun really, really quick, the short part of its orbit. We see it for, you know, just a few days or weeks, and then it's way out at the other end of its orbit for decades and decades. And that's very common with uh, comets. They have this very big elliptical orbit. The planets, they do have an elliptical orbit, but it's just not as crazy as uh, you may have been led to believe. Uh, if I get rid of the stars here just to make things a little bit clearer, you'll see that the Earth here is indeed closer to the Sun at its aphelion around around here, which is pretty close to winter time for us uh, here in the north. And it's pretty close to its uh, perihelion then, you know, somewhere around out here when it's at its furthest from the sun, which is, you know, the hottest time of the year for us. You know, we're coming into summer when the sun is at its furthest from the sun. And we're very much coming into winter when the sun is at its closest hour, when the earth is at its closest. Because our seasons, they don't really depend on how close the Earth is to the Sun, but on that axial tilt, which was mentioned in uh, videos earlier this week and last week. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it edifying. And uh, even though we can't travel to the Solar System Observer and uh, view the Earth as it would be from space, um, you may at least uh, enjoy that we are nice and warm, safe in the knowledge that we're quite far from the Sun. So. 
I hope you get a chance to enjoy the planets that I mentioned at the very, very start and get a chance to see them from the sky. I'll very quickly bring us back to the Earth, to the default location, uh, which for my computer is always set here at Cork. We can still see those orbits, they're still in the sky, and you can see that from here, uh, we're viewing them on the plane of the elliptic, uh, of the ecliptic, so they look a lot more like a straight line in the sky. You can kind of see the shape of Venus there, but looking at it from the Earth, the angle is really, really exaggerated because we are looking at it at an angle. So I hope you get to see those planets in the sky and I hope you get a chance to enjoy uh, the summer that we're now finally getting.